What is up from the Gabon League? Season 10 starts this Monday, November 29th. So let's talk about all the new stuff, the schedule, the new moves, new cups. I'll cover it all in today's video. Starting with the basics, like usual, you'll be able to get your end of season rewards once season 9 ends. The first time you enter the battle screen when season 10 is ongoing is when you'll be receiving your rewards. So make sure that if you want to pop a star piece for the sweet, sweet dust reward, you do it before you enter the battle screen in season 10. Besides that, like usual, uh, all ranks will be reset and the rank up requirements will remain the same as season 9. A really nice change for doing this season is, is that Pokemon rewards in Go Battle League will be easier to catch. So legendaries will be less of a headache, which is a really good change, I think. Now, on to the schedule from November 29th to December 13th, we'll have Great League and Great League Remix. Great League Remix is just open Great League where the top 20 Pokemon or top 20 most used Pokemon will be banned. Those 20 Pokemon are Venusaur, Nidoqueen, Alolan, and Ninetales, Azumarill, Umbreon, Skarmory, Swampert. So no Skarmory, Swampert core anymore, that's actually really nice. Vigoroth, my poor poor Sableye. Medicham, Altaria, Deoxys Defense, The Wall, Bastiaron, Scrafty, Jellicent, Galvantula, Galarian, Stunfisk, Manibus, Talonflame, and Obstagon. And what is jumping out for me uh, from this list is that a lot of dark types are banned, and a lot of Ninetales, and Skarmory, and Altaria, which are a lot of counters for Trevenant. So I think Trevenant is gonna be a, like a big monster. Besides that, a lot of fighters are banned. I'm surprised Vigoroth is banned, to be honest, but uh, I guess it was used a lot. I mean, it's a great Pokemon. A lot of fighters are banned, which means a Pokemon like Diggersby is really gonna shine. And this is reflected in the custom ranking as well. Diggersby and Trevenant are just rule uh, this meta. However, there are some okay core breakers for these, like a Noctile, for example, which a Pokemon we'll be talking about more later. It's gonna get a new move, which will... Give it some play against some uh, some other Pokemon in the top here as well, uh, like Lickitung, uh, like Cresselia with, well, the new Shadow Ball it's getting. Uh, I think Noctowl will be an absolute monster uh, in this meta, though, of course, it will have to watch out for Pokemon like Registeel. So overall, it's going to be an interesting one. I'm very happy to see Nidoqueen and Obstagoon banned because those were Pokemon that kind of ruled the previous, uh, like, remix metas. So I'm glad to see those banned and... Uh, of course, like absolutely busted Pokemon like Save Light, Medicham, Bastidon, Azumarill being out of there is really, really, really nice too. After the Great League metas, we'll get Ultra League and Ultra League Remix starting December 13th until December 27th. Ultra League Remix, just like Great League Remix, is just open Ultra League with some bans. In this case, 10 of the most used Pokemon are banned in Ultra League Remix, and these are Venusaur, Alola Muck. Umbrian, Swampert, Empoleon, Tokus, Altered Form, Giratina, Cresselia, Talonflame, and Obstagoon. And like usual with Ultra League Remix, I am kind of sad that what is banned are mainly just the very accessible non-XL Pokemon. You know, some of the most powerful non-XL Pokemon are Swampert, Empoleon, Alola Muck, uh, Obstagoon, you know, and, and Umbrian and, and Talonflame are XL. But they are like the most accessible excels you can find because both, both of them had community days, of course, and very common Pokemon. So it's kind of sad to see those are banned, meaning that you'll likely be uh, more dependent on running excels in Ultra League Remix than you were in regular Ultra League, uh, which I think sucks. Uh, but it is what it is. I think uh, seeing these bans, there are some dark types banned, of course, Alola Muck, Umbrian, Obstagoon. Uh, which I think will give a lot of room for a certain ghost tree. Just like in Great League Remix, I think uh, Trevenant will be a big player in uh, the Ultra League uh, Remix. However, there's still the likes of like Scrafty and Mandibus, which Mandibus will again be very broken in this meta. In this custom ranking I made, it's only uh, rank 40, but trust me, this thing is an absolute freaking monster. Uh, you know, it's just gonna, it kind of beats everything here. It can beat everything here. All the fighters, uh, it can beat Stunfisk even, uh, you know, it's just too strong. So, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of XL. You already see it here. The first five are XLs. Uh, yeah, get, get those XLs ready, I guess. Or play, uh, the different leagues that are running, uh, uh during it, Ultra League. 
which is also Excel heavy, but you can do with, you can go without Excels in Ultra League for sure. And I'll be trying to pump up some videos with non-Excel teams as well. But we've also got Holiday Cup, which begins December 16th, that runs until December 31st. And Holiday Cup is a great league uh, meta. We've had Holiday Cup uh, before uh, last year. I thought it was a very, very fun meta. It's a great league. And only normal grass, electric, ice, flying and ghost type Pokemon are allowed. Looking at this custom ranking here, it hasn't changed much since last time it was around. Though the addition of Shadow Ball on Noctow might give it a bit more play, but more about that uh, later. It's still a lot of Obstagoon, a lot of Vigoroth. Be prepared for Double Fighter was a common line last time it was around. And Frostless, I think, will still be the queen of this meta, even though it's only ranked 69 in this ranking. Trust me, that will move up. It's just a great answer to the likes of Vigoroth, Aboma Snow, all the other ice types, basically. And still has play versus everything else. Honestly, one of the strongest Pokemon in there. Though, this time around, there will be more Lickitung roaming around, because it's more uh, accessible these days than it was last December. Uh, however, there are some solid answers, uh, like a Wigglytuff, uh, like a Sensure or Sand Slash, and also, again, a Noctowl and a Zangoose are really good answers to... Uh, Lickton as well, so uh, definitely an interesting meta. And once it drops, of course, I'll be making some guides on it as well. Next up, after the Ultra League, we'll have Master League and Master League Classic from December 27th until January 10th. Uh, I'm very excited for Master League Classic, honestly, one of my favorite formats, so looking forward to that one. And uh, whilst this is going on, you'll get triple starters from Win Reward, just like we had last season during those two weeks this is not only for master league but also counts for like the four days of holiday cup we have in this period then after it we'll have open great league again combined with Sinnoh cup now Sinnoh cup is just what you would expect uh great league and only pokemon from the Sinnoh region are allowed i actually did a Sinnoh cup recently on my twitch uh, channel it was show six pick three and it was some quite some fun Pokemon to be honest. However, we did ban Bastidon because I feel like Bastidon is gonna be pretty ridiculous in this meta, but there's definitely some good answers uh, like a Gallade, like a Toxcroak, like a Lucario will be very common. Uh, what was I running again? Oh yeah, I was I was already running three uh, Bastidon answers with Empoleon, Lucario and Toxcroak. I think Empoleon is gonna be really really strong as well. Cresselia is gonna be an absolute uh, monster. Frostlass? In the absence of Bastidon is insane too. And I think even with Bastidon in there, it's going to be really, really good. However, uh, when you, if you run a Frost Slash, you definitely want some good answers for it. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of options. Quite a lot of solid, solid options. Also, like Gastrodon, really good answer uh, to uh, Bastidon. You have Pro Pass too, which is like a tank, uh, which can also beat Bastidon if you're running Spark and Thunderbolt. Uh, Gliscor is a good answer. Is a good Pokemon if you want to beat the Bastidon plus Fighter Core, which I feel like will be common. Same for like a Bronzong. You don't see it all, uh, much in this uh, format, uh, in this uh, tournament I did. I think Bronzong is, is going to be really solid as well to break that Fighter plus Bastidon Core. So I feel like in general it's going to be an interesting meta. I think it's going to be a bit Rock, Paper, Scissors. Maybe a bit dependent on the lead, but we'll see how it shapes up. You can never know before you play it. After that, we'll have Ultra League and Ultra League Premier Classic from January 24th until February 7th. Ultra League just opened. Ultra League Premier Classic is no Excel Pokemon and no Legendaries. We had this last season as well, and it's a pretty fun meta. From February 7th until February 21st, we'll have Master League and Master League Premier Classic combined with Love. Cup. We had Love Cup last year as well. It was a very, very fun meta. It's Great League and only red or pink Pokemon allowed, which gives a lot of room to the Pokemon like Alolomola, Scrafty, Talonflame, which I think last time still had Fire Spin. This time it incinerates. It's going to be even more of a monster. Slowbro was really sick. I used Magmortar with great success. Uh, it was a fun meta. And I feel like this season, Chansey would have ruined it. However, uh, well... Niantic made a good call and they nerfed Pound actually, so Chansey will be less strong uh, in Love Cup, which is, I think, a really good decision. Anyway, after the Love Cup, we'll get all three leagues combined with Johto Cup from February 21st and February t until tw February 28th. 
four leagues at once is kind of insane to be honest i feel like queue times are gonna suck especially for those uh up in the higher echelons of elo however uh you have a lot of options which i guess is good johto cup is interesting as well actually the tournament of that too and it is an interesting uh format as well i feel like again it's gonna be a little bit of rock paper scissors but i think there's some play here too there's some interesting uh options uh like it on top like lantern like ampharos which are very very solid but you also have pokemon like skarmory megadium azumarill umbrian which are just insanely tanky and kind of rps ish also uh jump left Polito though, really good core breaker with Blizzard, you can still hit uh, the, the grass types. Uh, Nocta, of course, is going to be really, really solid. And then one Pokemon I really enjoyed was a Typhlosion. If you run Typhlosion with Shadow Claw, it has basically play against everything. Even a Zumeril or a Lantern doesn't want to get hit by a Solar Beam, of course. So, uh, yes, I think, I think this will be a fun format as well. Overall, pretty happy with the schedule, to be honest. We have a lot of different uh, leagues, and I like the addition of Sido and Johto's. First time we're going to be seeing those. Uh, though they don't seem like the most amazing metas, to be honest, most balanced metas, they will be fun to play out anyway, at least for a couple of days or a week. Now, the Go Battle Days in Season 10, like in Season 9, on Go Battle Day, you'll be able to play 100 battles on that they and there will be a four times stardust bonus from win rewards active on the battle day uh, and these will be held on january 8th uh, during the master league and master league classic on january 23rd during great league and sino cup and on february 6th during ultra league and ultra league premier classic i really like how they've decided to do a Gobel day on each like different league you know we have one in master league we have one in great league and we have one in ultra league so i really enjoy that now the season 10 rewards honestly not that crazy interesting but we'll just go through it real quick for the guaranteed rank up encounters just the usual suspect first one is just the themed encounter from this season which this season is themed uh, towards uh, the leader of team flare Lai zander which is also the pose will get or the clothes will get as well. Ace rank will get the Lysander style gloves. And veteran will get the Lysander style shoes. And expert will get the Lysander style pants. Just some black pants. And legend will get the Lysander style jacket. Which I think is pretty cool. And the Lysander pose. Which I don't know. I hope it I hope it moves again. I hope it can, it's an animated pose again. Because just like this. I don't know. It looks kind of lame. I think the, the old pose is still better. But if it's animated. Who knows. It might be pretty good. We'll see. Anyway, besides that, we also have Mienfo, Noibet, Dido, and Pikachu Libre uh, once you rank up, which, you know, they are they are okay. As standard encounters, we just have the Johto starters, which are nice if you want to get some Excel candy for those. Uh, each of these catches will be guaranteed one Excel for Spinarak, which is, well, meh. Chinchou is okay. Azumarill, really nice. Actually, really nice encounter for, uh, for like, new players. Mienfo, uh, I mean, uh, it's not good, but... It's a GB, uh, go, battle, go Battle League only encounter, so that's cool. Noctowl, Fortress, I think, are kind of kind of cool. Uh, Fortress actually getting a new move, or it's getting one of his moves buffed, so that's nice. And Fortress, XL, actually has some, has, has some play in Ultra League, so a good to grant XL. Just, just like for Shield on, Skuntank, or Frillish, and Larvitar, Scraggy, actually. These are really nice encounters uh, to grant some XL coins for, all very viable in their respective leagues rufflet is, is fine uh, and then at level 20 or rank 20 you'll be able to get a legendaries again a noibat at 2500 and dino at 2750 plus so overall decent encounters there's some pretty shitty ones in there as well like spinnerack and like i think knockdown fortress are not the best either and info as well uh, but you know overall i'm pretty happy with this so pretty pretty pretty, pretty nice now onto the juicy stuff, the move updates of stuff I'm always most interested in. Unfortunately, though, this season it doesn't seem to be too crazy. However, we have a sub couple move attack changes. First off, a rock tomb. Uh, this attack will now have a guaranteed chance or a guaranteed uh, attack drop, which is nice. However, rock tomb is a really shitty move. It's 70 damage for 60 energy, which is very expensive. 60 energy. At only 7 damage, is really weak. Gives a 1.16 DPE for reference. A poke a move like Rock Blast, which is also a shitty move, has more DPE. <laughs> and it's less energy. 
Rock Slide, which is a decent move, has way more, has more damage for 15 less energy. So yes, this is a pretty shitty move. I wish they would have made it like something like Icy Wind. I feel like in order for Rock Tomb to be viable, they should have made it something like Icy Wind, where it's less energy, uh, still 100% chance for one attack uh, drop, but not that crazy high damage. I think that would have been way better. Uh, however, uh, it is what it is. Besides the Pokemon that currently have Rock Tomb, either are very much unusable, like, I mean, this, this first four, or they just have better moves, like a Geodude, Alolan, for example, has access to Rock Slide, so you're not gonna use Rock Tomb, to be honest. So, unfortunately, I don't see this making much of a wave. There are some new Pokemon, or some Pokemon that will get access to Rock Tomb now, though, which are Sudowoodoo, Macargo, Laron, Agron, and Claydo. They keep <laughs> they just keep giving Claydo moves. And well, unfortunately, I feel like most of these won't see much use out of Rock Tomb. Macargo already has X to Stone Edge, which is just better. Uh, Sudura has Rock Slide, which is just better. Uh, Laron, Agron, they are shit anyway. And Claydo has a lot of useful moves already, so I feel like we won't get, see much use out of Ro Rock Tomb. But maybe in a limited format, one day we'll see some use. Anyway, I'll try to make it work anyway. The attack drop is nice, and it doesn't really show in Sims, to be honest. Uh, but overall, I feel like there's better rock moves. All right, Pound from 5 to 4 damage. It's really nice. Chansey kind of ruined Kanto, even though it wasn't that common. Every time you run into a Chansey, it just sucks. It's just such a freaking busted Pokemon in Kanto. And it would have been busted in Love Cup as well, so I'm really happy they made this change. Just a direct chancy nerf, to be honest, which I'm all for. Then Bug Buzz will do 10 more damage, which makes it a really, really solid move. It was already, it was already a really solid move, actually, with 90 damage for 60 energy and the chance for a defense drop. However, now with 100 energy or 100 damage, it will be even more strong. But Bug type in general is just bad you know i mean it will it will like it say, says it will increase uh you know uh borbid and festivals and young megas uh, viability maybe uh, in limited formats but an open great league that just sucks there's just so much targeting and however i feel like this is still a good change i feel like this is definitely still a good change uh just because in limited formats bug will be more viable now if if you can bend some of its hardest counters uh like two types like fire types, like poison types, like uh, everything that resists bug, which is like 50% of the game, uh, then bug types will be very viable. For example, a Golvantula might be able to run bug best now instead of lunch, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, not that usual for change in open, but I think for limited, it will be nice. Now, the new moves added to Pokemon. Donphan will now be able to learn Body Slam, which is really, really nice. Donphan already is a really interesting move set with counter. Uh, and uh, Charm being its main fast move options, and then uh, Earthquake, Heavy Slam, and Play Rough being its charge move options currently, which are very expensive, but now at Body Slam, it will have a really nice bait move and just a quick move. Uh, basically, anything that's counter and Body Slam is strong, to be honest. Same with Don Fan. Previously, with just counter, Heavy Slam, Earthquake, it had a 39% win rate in Great League. Now, with Body Slam, 61%. Still not amazing. But it does give Donphan a lot more play, especially in some limited formats. I think we'll see a lot of Donphan. Noctowl, Shadow Ball, really nice. Previously, Noctowl only had access to Wing Attack and Sky Attack. And then Psychic or Nightshade as secondary options. And those were all kind of meh. With Shadow Ball, it will now give Noctowl a lot more play against Psychic types mainly. And some Ghost types. So that's really, really good. Also, a good neutral hitting options versus Steel types like Galarian Stunfisk. And Registeel. It won't help it beat those uh, matchups. However, it will be able to do more damage. So that's nice. Macargo. I think probably the biggest buff this season. Learns the fast attack Incinerate. And a, a Rock Tomb match charge. We've already talked about Rock Tomb. That's not much of a change to be honest. But Incinerate is really interesting. Really strong move. Better than, I think, Ember. What it has now is Fire Move. Uh, and also a better move than Rock Throw. Uh, generally, though... I think most of the time, Macargo is viable, which has basically been just Love Cup last year. Uh, Rock Throw might still be better because there's a lot of like Alamola, which of course they resist the fire and Slowbro, which also resists the fire, uh, where Rock will do neutral. 
and also opposing Makargo, where you would probably lose the mirror if you don't go Rock Throw. So I don't know if it's a huge change, but I think Makargo might see some play in the open grade league now. So big up for Makargo, but it's not a huge change. Now, Octillery, this is... <laughs> Now, Butchot was not fast enough for Octillery just yet. It's now getting a lock on. And Octillery already has access to Octazuka being its quickest move. Also has Gunk Shot. It's like a crazy move set. Uh, but now at lock on, it will be able to fire off Octazukas in 5 seconds. It's it's crazy. It's gonna be so fast. Will it be good? No. But if you want a very spammy debuff bot, Octillery is the one for you. We already talked about Sudowoodo. Rock Tomb, uh, or, or we already talked talk, talk about all these actually. Rock Tomb won't be much of a of a change for them, unfortunately. So overall, I feel like Season 10 is going to be another fun one. Overall, there's some interesting new formats to be played, like Sinnoh, Johto, and The Return of Love and Holiday. I really, really like. Uh, the moveset updates, kind of, uh, I don't know. I feel like they could have done more with Rock Tomb especially. Uh, but I think for open metas, won't be much change, of course, but for limited metas... Especially the bug types, especially uh, Donphan and Macargo. Uh, they'll have some interesting play in the future, which is nice to see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the battlefield, trainers. Have a good one.